Good morning, everybody. Good morning here in Hamburg, very much welcome at the second Science 2.0 conference here in Hamburg. This conference is organized by two institutions. The first one is the ZBW, that is the Leibniz Information Center for Economics, and the second one is the Research Alliance Science 2.0. The ZBW, for those of you who don't know it yet, is the largest information infrastructure for economics. We collect all the scientific literature in economics and we do that with an operational budget of 25 million per year with 260 stuff. And the second organ organizing partner is the Leibniz Research Alliance Science 2.0. That alliance has been formally approved by the Leibniz Association in 2012. Leibniz Association is one of the four big extra university research organizations we have in Germany. And the research alliance is composed of two different types of organizations. We have between 35 and 40 member organizations. Half of them come from universities and research organizations and the other half comes from libraries and information infrastructures. And the two together, they investigate how does the participatory internet impact on scientific publication and research processes. We started our research on Science 2.0 in 2012. At that time, the topic was not very much known in the public. It was known and was used in the scientific communities. Other terms um, were used um, uh, like open science and e-science, but they all were limited to the respect respective scientific community and was not very much uh, in the public. This has changed dramatically. These days we talk about science in transition. In Germany we talk about Digitalisierung der Wissenschaft, digitization of science, and they all have in common to explore how do internet technologies impact on science. That is the key topic, and one reason why Science 2.0 has managed uh, such an increased awareness is the public consultation of the European Commission. That public consultation on Science 2.0 started um, last year, I think sometime in September, um, and after they opened the questionnaire. I received many calls from the German ministries, from the German funding organizations, because they wanted to know what actually is Science 2.0. And thanks to the public consultation, we will learn about uh, the public consultation more during the course of the conference. Thanks to that one, it became you know, visible in the ministries and the research organizations. Um, I do not want to address the outcomes of that um, uh, consultation. That will be done by Dr. Jean-Claude Bogelmann, head of unit, and uh, he was responsible for that public consultation. But still, there are three aspects I would like to highlight concerning this consultation. The first one is the public consultation has put Science 2.0 on the agenda of the research funding organizations and on the agenda of the ministries for research and education in Germany. As mentioned earlier, we received many calls, we got invitations to present the topic to the expert groups in the ministries, in the research organizations. And we have already the first um, funding programs in Germany addressing Science 2.0 explicitly. We have that at the federal level, we have that um, in the research, German research funding organization, the DFG. They have a program on uh, electronic publishing and scientific communication and explicitly address the aspect of how do a social media components impact on electronic publishing. That is the first achievement, awareness of Science 2.0 as an important research topic in the funding organizations. The second one, and maybe the, for, for us as ZBW, the most important one, um, Libraries and information infrastructures became aware that they can play a crucial role in Science 2.0. You know, the libraries, they sometimes lack a little bit self-confidence because um, uh, the traditional business kind of disappears. Um, uh, just some figures of the ZBW, we have 4.7 million printed materials, books and journals 
and uh, roughly 350,000 of these items are um, used by our users per year. 350,000 out of 4.2 million printed material. On the other side, in the digital world, um, we had in 2010 one million downloads of uh, digital full text in PDF. In 2014, this number has increased to 5.5 5 million downloads of digital full text. So it increased by a factor of five over the last five years. And for libraries and information infrastructures, Science 2.0 could really be something in which they play a very important and crucial role. And why is that? Because we have the publications, be it in printed or in digital form. And in addition to that, we are in contact with the scientific community. The scientists do come to the libraries, to the information infrastructures. They talk to us, and we know what they need. Um, we are in contact with the researchers producing the publications. We uh, engage in workshops with them to identify how does their publication behavior change. And this role um, we want to further um, develop over the upcoming years. So that is the second big impact. Libraries and information infrastructures can play a crucial role in Science 2.0. And the third impact of the public consultation was that it also opened our own view on the topic. When we started in 2012 with Science 2.0, we had a very focused perspective on participatory internet, more focused even social media and its impact on publication and research processes. But the view of the consultation was much broader. In that consultation, um, also related areas were addressed. Areas such as citizen science, big data, open access, alt metrics, legal issues, higher education issues. And that is new to, was new to us. And we kind of um, also opened our perspective on the topic. And even though there is now the connection between these research areas like citizen science, big data analytics, to, and science 2.0, we still don't know exactly what that relationship will be. Is science 2.0 a research topic on its own? Or will science 2.0 become part of the other research topics? That is science 2.0 or open science is just part of citizen science of big data analytics? Or will it be even the other way around, that the other research domains become part of Science 2.0? Frankly, I doubt that the latter will happen. I doubt that um, um, the other topics, like citizen science, will become part of Science 2.0. But how these different research disciplines interact with each other is completely unknown at the moment. And in the light of these questions, we designed this year's conference program. For those of you who attended the uh, conference in 2014, last year, you will have noticed uh, that conference was very much on the core topics of Science 2.0 in our notion, very much on social media aspects, um, new um, working habits, new technologies, new user behavior, and all that related to uh, the social media. This year, we invited experts from all over the world to bring in their perspective from their related research areas. And when I say from all over the world, I mean it literally. We have experts from Hong Kong, Professor Chui from Hong Kong. I think you had the farthest way to, to come. Thank you very much for that. He will be talking about uh, MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses in Innovation, and the relationship between that and Science 2.0. Professor Rockwell from Canada, from University of Alberta, sitting there in the last row. Very glad that you are here. He will be talking about digital humanities and the relationship between humanities and science 2.0. We have Professor Isidro Aguilo from Spain sitting in the second row there. He will be talking about metrics 2.0. So how can we measure, how can we rank um, like new publication behavior through the internet? We have one of the leading experts in Europe on big data analytics, Professor Stefanie Lindstedt, sitting there from the No Center in Graz. She will relate big data and science 2.0. We have Dr. Romari, who is not yet here at the moment. He will join us um, during lunchtime. He will be talking about the connection of open access and science 2.0. And um, maybe last speaker I would like to mention explicitly is Professor Aletta Bonn. Um, where is she? There, 
um, because she is uh, the project manager of the leading citizen science project we have in Germany. And she will relate the topic uh, Science 2.0 and citizen science. So we want these experts to sh share their view on synergies between their topic and Science 2.0. Uh, like last year, we will not have any parallel sessions. All sessions, all presentations will be given here to the entire audience. In addition to these presentations, we do have two interactive sessions. Um, uh, the first one will update you on the outcomes of the Research Alliance Science 2.0. So we will present um, outcomes, results we achieved in uh, joint projects in that alliance. And the second one, is uh, very important for the future of our alliance. That one, uh, the second um, interactive session, is about shaping the future of Science 2.0. So we would like to know how should we develop this conference for the future? And secondly, um, what should be a roadmap for European, uh, um, a European roadmap for Science 2.0? And thirdly, what could be uh, like further education formats <coughs> to, to train the scientific community in Science 2.0? This Topics will be addressed in the second interactive session, and I think this one will take place today, this afternoon. In addition, of course, we offer uh, plenty of room for networking in the coffee breaks and during lunch, and finally also during our uh, conference dinner, which takes place tonight, I think, at 7 o'clock. Um, uh, and we will have time there, a couple of hours, to informally network and share our views on the topic. That is what I wanted to say. I wish you interesting, good days today and tomorrow here in Hamburg. Please enjoy the conference. Thank you very much.